The shoes we wear matters. Think about that. Any athlete will tell you that their shoes are important to their performance. Baseball players wear baseball cleats. Soccer players wear soccer cleats. Basketball players wear basketball shoes. You wouldn't wear soccer shoes to play basketball. Wearing the wrong shoes negatively affect the performance of an athlete and might even cause injury in their life. Shoes are critical to the military as well. Any soldier will tell you the shoes they wear into combat matter. And a Roman soldier had to wear the right shoes when he went into battle. Paul talking about the armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6 talks about the shoes that a, a, a Roman soldier would wear. I don't know if you know this or not, but they wore sandals that would tie up around their ankles and they actually had uh, thickly studded sharp nails on the bottom of those sandals. They were very important to their performance when they went into battle. In Ephesians chapter 6, Paul speaks about the spiritual armor that every Christian, you and I, need if we're going to be able to defeat the enemy. He spoke about the belt of truth. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. We've talked about the breastplate of righteousness. And now Paul addresses in verse number 15 the footwear that we need to have in our spiritual armor. So let's read it, chapter 6, verse number 15. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Notice preparation. The word preparation means being ready. Have your shoes on, have your shoes tied, and be ready to engage in the activity or the battle. I don't, buy, I don't know about you, but I put my shoes on before I leave the house every morning. I don't carry my shoes out to the car and drive to the office and then put my shoes on at 10 o'clock in the morning. And I don't think you do either. We put our shoes on before we leave the house and we are ready for the activities that we will face that day. We must always be ready for an attack or an assault by the enemy. Yes, we have an enemy. His name is Satan. And too many times you and I are caught off guard because of a lack of spiritual preparation. A lack of spiritual preparation. So Paul talks about the preparation. Then he talks about the purpose. These special shoes that, that a Roman soldier would wear provided mobility and stability. Mobility and stability and stability. Mobility enabling them to move forward and stability enabling them to stand when they had to fight against their enemy. In fact, this was the point uh, that Paul emphasized over and over in Ephesians. We read in chapter 6 verse number 11 where Paul said, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm, stand firm against the schemes of the devil. And then in chapter 6, verse number 13, Paul said, Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. My friend, it's about you and I having the right shoes, the right armor, so that we can stand firm and fight against the enemy. Too many Christians lack stability in their life. And too many times we are so easily pushed around when we are under attack. I see Christians today and they allow the culture to push them around. They allow people's opinions to push them around. They allow politics to make them unsure and unstable in what they really believe. We can't be like that. We have to, we have, to have the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness and we have to have the right shoes on so that we can stand firm in what we believe and we can resist the enemy when he comes at us. Now the shoes that Paul talks about here are the shoes of peace. The shoes of peace. So we can stand firm but we stand firm in the gospel of peace. Like the other pieces of armor uh, the gospel of peace comes down to a relationship with Jesus Christ. In fact, I would say Jesus is our peace. 
And I think I can back that up with scripture. In Ephesians chapter two, uh, in the 13th verse, Paul said, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were formerly afar off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who made both groups into one and broke down the barriers of the dividing wall. Paul is talking there about the difference and the division between the Jews and the Gentiles. And he said, since Jesus shed his blood, we come into a relationship with him and he is our peace. Peace is a person and, and we have to have a relationship with him. And, and when you think about peace, there's really two aspects or two sides of peace. And the first one is positional peace, positional peace. Again, the Apostle Paul talks about that in Romans 5.1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Having been justified by faith in God or faith in Christ, we now have peace with God. It's important that you and I have peace with God. According to Romans 5.10, prior to salvation, we had no relationship with God. I don't know about you, but I remember when I didn't have a relationship with God and the scripture identifies at that time we were enemies. Think about that, enemies of God. But through Jesus, we are justified, we are reconciled, and now we enjoy peace with God, perfect harmony with our heavenly Father. And that's a confidence that you and I must stand in. So there's positional peace and then there's experiential peace or practical peace. And Paul again talks about that, but he does in the Rome in uh, Philippians chapter four, verse number six, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Here it is, and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So once I have peace with God, then I can experience the peace of God. Once we're at peace with God, we enjoy the peace of God. And the peace of God doesn't mean there's no conflict in our life. Paul's talking about spiritual battles. He's talking about warfare. So the peace of God doesn't mean we'll never have problems or we'll never be tempted or we'll never be under attack or we'll never be criticized. No, it's having a confidence and a comfort and an assurance in our heart that everything's gonna be all right when it looks like everything's falling apart. So my friend, it's important that every day you and I put on the armor of God that we have to have the belt of God's truth, the truth of the word. We have to have the breastplate of righteousness, the righteousness of Jesus. And we have to have our shoes on, the shoes of the gospel of the peace of God. So I think it's important every day that you maybe get out of bed and just make a confession. Heavenly Father, I believe your word, your word declares that I have peace through Jesus Christ. And I thank you for the peace that I have with God and the peace of God that rules my heart in every season of my life. So today I'm gonna to walk in your peace. Today I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy your peace. And today I'm gonna to do everything I can to make peace with others. That's a good confession. We ought to confess it every day. In the meantime, I hope to see you on Sunday, 915, 1115, right here in the big house. I will see you soon.